Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Uh, in this video, my plan is to show you how to use Norm on OpenCV with the new GTuner IV update that contains computer vision. Currently, I have my game already loaded from the Xbox One, which I'm using the Xbox One. Uh, I'm using the HD60 Pro, the Elgato gaming card. So, yes, uh, the goal is I'm gonna show you how to use the norm but first I'm gonna divide this video on two parts I have to explain first this little program here call it norm box or this script which I made myself and this norm box uh, script will make it a lot easier for everyone who wants to use norm or comparing because as you know norm you will have to only get a specific corner or a specific place from point A to point B on this um, on a picture and then you have to compare that with another picture or frame you can call it frame and uh, the, the bad side is that it is a little bit complicated if you're just doing it with our uh, program such as um, this one jump it will be a little bit hard to to get it but so I'm gonna try to make it a little bit easier for you guys with this norm box. So let's begin. What is norm box? So in this script that I made, norm box, the idea is that with your own gamepad, no, it doesn't matter if you're using a PlayStation or an Xbox One or any other, it should make it easy for you. Uh, I am providing, you know what? Before, let's just play it around. Let me just uh, right now it's running here. So this is what norm box do. It shows you the coordinate x1, x2, y1, and y2. Also, it includes the width and the height. Um, as you can see here, I am displaying that text with this code here. Basically, what I'm saying is coordinate x1 and y1. Those two would be this point here, this blue corner right here. Um, that would be x1 because x represent the value from left to right in my computer in, in my case I'm doing the game capture card is grabbing this at 1920 by 1080 that means 1920 pixels left to right and 1080 from the top to the bottom so in my first coordinate x1 y1 I'm saying that go to the pixel number 761 and from the Y axis which is top to bottom go to the pixel number 545 so when you add up X and Y it will give me this coordinate here and X to Y to as you might guess is this bottom corner right here so X to would be 993 so from left to right 993 and from top to bottom it will be 636 now it moved because I pressed the d-pad but that's the next thing that I want to show you in my script I did I said that on the d-pad you can control the box so uh, this is what, what allows you to increase the size of the box decrease it if you want to let's say that for example you want to increase it up right so you need to press this button here the d-pad up this is d-pad up left down right so let, let's try to increase to push up this blue square so to push it up I'm gonna press the d-pad up and it will grow but you might notice here too that the y-axis is decreasing because it's going up remember in pixels from the top of the computer is zero, axis zero. The bottom would be whatever number it is, 1080 or whatever other value you have. That's why if I push it up, it starts de to decrease. If I push it down, if I press the pad down, it starts to increase. Now, what if I press the right button? You notice here on X1, what's gonna happen? Start to increase. Because in the X axis, left to right, left is zero 
right, all the way to the right, would be 1920, 1920. So if I push left, it's gonna decrease x1. And you're gonna notice the width is start growing because width represents x axis. The height represents the 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 y axis. Y is top to bottom. The width is left to right. So now but you notice that only one square I'm moving currently I'm only moving this one here. What if you wanna move the next side? x2 y2 well i made in my screen i made it that if you press this button here the one above the left trigger or in a in playstation 3 or 4 they might call it the l1 button uh you're gonna click that button and notice down here on the output panel that is gonna says now changing x2 y2 and if you press the left button the left d-pad you're gonna notice that it's moving now to the other side and the width is the same thing, it's changing and the x2 value is changing too. And if you push up, it start moving. Only this corner here is gonna move. So what is useful about this? The useful thing is that if you want to, let, let's say for example in this game, I like it that sometimes it asks you to press a button. So if you want to press a button, let's see if it shows up. Uh, come on show it to me there there you go you saw that button uh, around the middle so we can move the button to the middle if we want to where it is located and then just take a picture this pro this script will make a will take a picture for you and it will also save the coordinates for you so you can do everything much easier now there's only one downside you saw how quick that went well in this I also added something that is, it can allow you to grab the a frame and freeze it for you so you can always take a look at that frame so let's try it one more time but this time as soon as we see it we're gonna press this button in the control the right stick or in the PlayStation it would be called the right 3 R3 so we're gonna press it down as soon as we see the X button because we need to grab a picture of the button how it looks so let's try it one more time hopefully this happens quick come on come on show it to me show it to me oh come on guys there you go and there you have it I just froze the image. Now I'm gonna pause my game. In my TV, because I'm looking at it, I can see that the game is paused. In yours, you only see a frame that it froze. It looks like the game glitched. But it actually didn't. I froze it by pressing this button, R3. Uh, that way, it allows you to do more, more stuff. So you don't have to lose the chance of taking the picture. Now that I froze the image, I can move the blue circle around that X button. So let's try to move it as close as we can. Uh, let me get a good close over there. Yes, that's pretty good. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I think that looks nice. Okay, so now that we have it, the blue square is right where I want it. I want that area to be always compared. If I see that X button, I want my my controller to do an action or the computer to tell me something. So, how can I take the picture? Well, in my script, I also made some uh, function or an idea that can extract the image for you. No, wait, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. So it it takes the image for you, and it will also save you a text file, letting you know the coordinates and all the information you need so how do you how do we do that to do that we're gonna press this button the left stick and you will see on the oh by the way uh, the creator of this 3d model is called owl 3d he's selling his 3d model on this website called sketch fact um, but I'm using his model just to show you guys better how to use the controller so moving forward 
So when you press the left stick, you're gonna notice that here is gonna give you some information in the output panel. So I'm gonna press it once now. There you go. It will tell me a PNG and a text file has been created on directory and it will tell you where the folder is located. Basically it's telling me in the folder called YouTube. So now what we can do with that is we're gonna open here the script and we're gonna see that out of nowhere it appeared these two files and this one which by the way if we open this file you're gonna notice that is the image being frozen so now uh what is this file here the xy jpeg represents the button the picture that we took the xy represents the coordinates it shows you here the coordinate it took like a snapshot of it so you know you will always know what was the location for x1 y1 x2 y2 the width and the height value and in here i made it super easy for you guys so you can just copy this variable here paste it on your code and just like that the computer will know exactly from the frame where to look at so you can use this much easier to compare we're gonna do this on the video part number two but I want to go back on this. Do you notice here the red corners? Here, that's bad because it won't always be red. So let's try to change that. Let's only focus that everything looks black and only this blue X shows up. So for that, we can just keep pressing a little bit. Make sure that it's on X1, Y1 if you want to or however you want to move it. So just move it a little bit to the right. A little bit to the left oops a little bit right a little bit down then press LV one more time now a little bit to the left a little bit up now let's take another picture we're gonna press again LS left stick to see what's gonna happen so again I press it it took another picture and you're gonna notice that it updated the picture now you don't see the black corners at the bottom so this will automatically be updating the files you don't have to delete them unfortunately you cannot delete this one because if you try it it will give you an error and also you might break the code so you might have to relaunch the code again but for now we're gonna keep fixing this one until these red or white lines disappear so it seems like i just have to move it to x1 y1 and just press down one more time now let's press else s again left stick let's take a look almost there only one more one more down picture let's take a look and the all set that's exactly how i want it so now this image is gonna be ready to put and compare it with on python so yes this is how you use normbox I just wanted to do this quick video well it's not quick it's 13 seconds but yeah this was a little idea that I had because going back and forth trying to use GIMP and for me GIMP was not working at all uh, so I I made this and honestly it's super easy uh, on the second video I'm gonna be making a how to use norm and how to send the signal to the Titan 2 if you just want the titan to, to move or something how to do it so anyway thank you so much you guys for watching my video and be safe